Eric Osiakwan is my name and I'm co-founder of Angel Africa. Angel Africa is a network of angel investors across the continent. When we first saw the businesses, uh, they'd just come off the plane from all over Africa uh, and they did a warm up. And we had a team, a panel of people uh, appraising and coaching their three minute pitch because it's very difficult to explain your business in 180 seconds. So it's, it's less about the fund and it's all about the individual that you're working with because they're, they're the person that you create the relationship with that helps you develop the business. So you work collaboratively, it's, you work as a team. Every single week we had to interact, she had to find out what was going on with the product and you know, I had to be sincere because there were some stages where we didn't know much about what we're doing and we needed to get advice from uh, the likes of Esther Dyson. So keep it tight, keep it clear. As far as the investors are concerned, um, I hope you enjoy it. We're looking to raise a million dollars to help us grow this business outside of the region. Uh, the first seed money was actually to grow um, it, or to, for our internationalization, and this is to grow beyond that. We're looking to become market leaders in 10 to 15 countries um, over the next three years. We want to increase um, with an additional plant that will produce 192,000 liters per month, uh, providing an investment opportunity of seven million, um, which also then, of course, uh, will help us uh, generate revenues at around 20, 27 million. And we've had some very good feedback from the investor community, and I think what we hope to see ultimately is some deals being done. I think the concept of an angel fair of bringing uh, entrepreneurship uh, talent to potential funding sources is vital um, just because the continent well, the continent is not that well connected like other continents are. Um, so the concept today is very good because it gives potential funders access to potential investment opportunities. It was the maiden edition of Angel Fear West Africa, a unique event organized by the Lagos Angel Network LAN and Angel Africa List AAL. Local and international angel investors and venture capitalists were in Lagos, Nigeria to identify promising startup businesses and provide the needed seed and early stage funding and mentoring that such businesses require to succeed. Angel Fear West Africa commenced on the 29th of March 2014, spanned over three days and ended on the 31st, during which investors and entrepreneurs were presented with opportunities to network and do deals. On day one of the program, the rehearsal was held at Blowfish Hotel, Victoria Island, Lagos with over 20 registered businesses present. The program kicked off with a welcome speech by the FEAR's co-founder, Mr. Eric Osiakwan of Angel Africa List. So today our focus is to try and get you ready. Um, we're going to see what the pages are and we're going to help you fine-tune it and get it to the level where somebody in the audience say what you said is interesting and I want to talk to you, I want to invest with Thereafter, the entrepreneurs practiced pitching their business ideas for five minutes each. During this session, errors were highlighted by the audience and corrections were duly made. 
At the end of the day's activities, the author co-founder of The Fair, Mr. Tommy Davis of the Lagos Angel Network, coached the entrepreneurs on how to best present their business to potential investors. And that's why we want you to focus on telling a story that is independent of any aid. Remembering this is the first time they're meeting you. The whole idea is, is this person somebody I can trust, you know, with money? The businesses that were to pitch the following day include Formaline, GCP Solar, Haibu, Equinox Intercom Limited, DJS.TV. There was also Gauna, Autobox, ePump, Idea Centric, Smart Exposure. Then, Prep Class, Kobe Limited, Cyber School Technology Solutions, Ventura Media Group, Talent Base Nigeria Limited, and last but not the least, Morpheus, Save and Buy, Pro Work, Takamoto Biogas, and Hot Bay. Day 2 was dedicated to startup entrepreneurs looking for seed capital for their businesses. The event was held at the prestigious Intercontinental Hotel with over 70 local and international business angels present. The chairman of the Lagos Angel Network, Mr. Adedotun Sulaiman, gave the opening speech. The people who are going to be listening to today are people who have business ideas and need angel funding. And by angel, angel funding, we have at $50,000. No more than $50,000. If you need more than $50,000, they're no longer angel, and no longer in the realms of angel investment. Now, there's another show tomorrow, which is for businesses, state startup businesses that are post revenue. They've taken the businesses off the ground, they have customers, they started making money, and they need money to, to scale up. Thereafter, two panel sessions held, and panelists shared their individual perspectives on challenges facing startups and investor expectations. The morning panel members were Tommy Davis from Nigeria, Ehosa Omogui from USA, Fatui Mata Saokona from Liberia, and Sangodel from Ghana, while those at the afternoon session were Tayo Oguntikbe, Shegun Olukoya. Alex Brahm and Femi Akinde, all from Nigeria. Between the panels, entrepreneurs had an opportunity to pitch their businesses to the investors who came for the fair. Among the entrepreneurs were Cecil Notako eCampus from Ghana, Charles Phillips Autobox from Nigeria, Econem Mo Smart Exposure Nigeria, Salas Akwoche Adir-Centric Nigeria, Patrick Ngencio, DJS.TV, Cameroon, Pilbi Gauna, Benin, Alosius Atta, Farmaline, Ghana, Olumide Ogunlano, Prep Class, Nigeria, Ayodeji Ogundiro, E-Pump, Nigeria. At the end of the day session, entrepreneurs had one-on-one -on -one interactions with different investors interested in their businesses. Well, the little feedback I got during the break, of, you know, some of the investors have uh, been telling me some of the company that they look to talk to uh, that they find very interesting. Um, everybody is quite excited, which is good. Um, again, the, the least we can achieve from this event is to create excitement and to get people to connect. And um, the fact of the matter is that there are, there's quite a significant number of them that are particularly interesting and, and we think are probably investable uh, to a certain degree. Uh, now, of course, this is all subject to you know, taking the time to do their proper diligence and evaluation. But on the face of it, there's some really interesting entrepreneurs and very interesting startups. From my side, I'm, I'm highly impressed. Uh, the, the level of quality of the, um, of, of the entrepreneurs has been extraordinary. The amount of energy and passion has been amazing. Um, and I think for a first year event, the Angel Fair Lagos has, has a lot of potential and will have huge growth. I like the approach that the Angel Fair and 2014 has taken, no presentation slides, let the investors do the selling, um, make their pitch. And I think it's, it, en it enhanced um, the way that the, the pitches have been delivered and you get to see more content or hear more content. I'm actually quite impressed uh, by what has been put together. Uh, the platform 
the program, the opportunities that it presents for some of us who are potential investors. Um, I think I'm even more interested in the platform, the process, uh, than anything else, because I believe that once you have the right process for putting together those opportunities, it becomes a lot easier to identify the right opportunities to invest in and to also ensure that after the investment, you're likely to create the value that you originally had uh, at the point of investment. The last day of the program was focused on established businesses that had passed the seed funding stage and were now looking to raise follow-on capital to expand. The keynote speaker for the day was the Honorable Minister for Industry, Trade and Investment, Mr. Olushegun Aganga. The first thing is to congratulate everyone in this room, the angel investors, but more importantly the entrepreneurs in this, in this, in this room. Uh, this is one sector that we are very, very passionate about because this is where jobs will be created. This is where wealth will be created. In every economy, anywhere in the world, it is the end SMEs that try to come. So it's a sector on its own. The opportunities in this country are huge. There's so much money to be made. Who spoke extensively about the need to support the emergence of a vibrant startup funding industry in Nigeria. Panel discussions also held, and members of the investor panel included Mr. Adedotun Suleiman from Nigeria, Mr. Marizio Cairo from South Africa, Mr. Falabieson also from Nigeria, and Vibe Bua of the Tony Alumelu Foundation. The afternoon entrepreneur panel comprised of Mr. Eric Osakwan from Ghana, Mr. Tunde Kaide from Nigeria, Mr. Kofi Danzie, also from Ghana, and Mr. Tayo Oviosu from Nigeria. So I've been very impressed, especially with the panelists, you know, and also the experiences, etc., because a lot of these things we're all facing, you know. So at least this gives a this gives a forum uh, one to just let you know you're not the only one out there. That um, two, it can be done, you know. Three, that also, you know, that it is possible that we we all have shared experiences. This whole idea of bootstrapping, starting with family first, then moving to this, etc. That's practical. We all started. What this forum does, though, is to, is to provide a very efficient way for people to actually get a lot of good ideas, but also just establish what is typically a long process. So it's not like you show up in an event, you hear a pitch, and you write a check. You know? But at least that's, that's, that initial process of bringing the ideas and the financiers together is an extremely critical first step. So I think that's actually the biggest value of this. One of the engine of growth is to make sure that we have more companies and more profitable companies on the ground. And I think uh, the different governments in Africa are doing so many different things to create the conditions for that. But it's also we as capital and entrepreneurs that need to do something about it. So I think this is a place where we can facilitate private capital and entrepreneurs to work together and leverage the fact that the conditions around this are getting better and better in Africa. During the day session, several early stage entrepreneurs had the opportunity to pitch their businesses to venture capital investors. Amongst them were Sydney Yankson, GCP Solar Ghana, Ugo Obi, Save and Buy Nigeria, Francis Owumere, ProWork Nigeria, Emeka Modi, Mafios Nigeria, Uzioma Obiaka, Talent Base Nigeria Limited Nigeria, Pledge 51, Las Bass, and Hot Bay. It's a very good initiative in West Africa because it's so raw to, to find that this kind of event and uh, we are very pleased to, to participate. Angel Fair, I think, is the greatest thing that can have, I ever happen to an entrepreneur in this part of the world. And I'm grateful. I'm so grateful we made it here. Yeah, it's been great. I mean, it's a good opportunity for businesses like us to uh, meet with the, you know, the investor community um, to get a better understanding of what kind of opportunities they're looking at for investment and obviously for ourselves to get in front of them as well and to tell them a bit more about what we're doing. I'm full of admiration for the people that have actually organised it. I think it's a fantastic initiative. Um, we all know that small businesses are the engine of growth for, for the economy 
and this is it being practicalized, if I can use that word. So I'm living here full of inspiration. Getting feedback from some of the investors shows that they, they really understand what is going on one. I think they were also quite pleased at the quality of the pitches that were made today. Um, for some of them who saw them yesterday and today, they saw the difference in the pitch. I think one interesting aspect of it was that there were no PowerPoint slides. You know, so you got entrepreneurs speaking from the heart, telling a story about their businesses. And that is really what an investor is looking for. He needs to be convinced that this is a good story and this person standing in front of me is credible and can make it happen. So I think they were all quite pleased and I'm sure coming out of this we'll have one or two investments in some of the businesses that we've seen so far. I think the feedback was taken on pretty well, you know, um, it's always constructive criticism. We are not there to try and bring you down or to try and pick holes in, in, in what you believe in. We're only there to try and make things sound more interesting and exciting to investors because that's the type of perspective that we have. So. Yeah, I think there's definitely an improvement. Today wasn't about convincing them to invest. Today was about interesting them in the idea and the people. And you see, people don't invest in ideas, they invest in people. So the whole idea was, for the want of a better word, a beauty parade. is to showcase the fact that, hey, I have an idea that I can execute on that can potentially make money. So it's up to the investors to decide, is this the kind of idea I want to invest in? Is this the kind of person I want to invest in? That, that was, that's what this is all about. Um, the details on the, of the mechanics, you, may, you would even find some of those ideas are going to go through iterations before they make it to market. It's always inspiring to see pitches. It's always good to uh, get questions from investors also. and. Um, what you see happening now is that there are, uh, um, in many cities across Africa, angel networks are coming up. That's a very good uh, development, uh, I think. And uh, what we try to do with uh, uh, the VC for Africa platform is to connect local uh, angel networks with global networks of angels uh, uh, for investments in uh, Africa's next success stories. 6.6, 6.7. Personally, I would give it a 9. 7.5? I'll give you a 7. I would have to say 7 or 8. Um, it's definitely room for improvement, but it's, it's a very good start. I'd give it a 7. 7, 7.5. Seven an 8 or a 9. Uh, there, you know, there is some room for improvement. Yeah, I'll say 8. Okay. Plus the food, 9. <laughs> So thank you very much ladies and gentlemen, my name is Charles Nelson, I will be your pitch master this morning. Welcome once again to Angel Fair Africa 2015 and this is the third in a series of uh, pitching games we've been organizing across the African continent. If you are not aware of you or if you may be aware, uh, the very first one was done in 2013 in Jubex, South Africa, uh, it was acclaimed popularly. The next one was in 2014 in Nigeria, Lagos, and of course in our own background here in Ghana being the third one. Good morning to everyone. Uh, I want to thank you all for taking time of your busy schedules to uh, come to our program. Some of you have flown in, some of you have been here the last three days uh, with the World Water World Organized Africa Technology Summit. Uh, so I'm really honored that you could take time to come and hang with us. Um, 
the second is that we'll come permission from the hotel for you to go write checks. So if you have your checkbook, please don't hesitate to uh, write checks. It's allowed, it's legal. And so thank you very much. Uh, have fun and uh, back to the page master. For EVA funds, it's always very important to invest in what we call African solutions for African issues. Uh, and not just copycatting models from the from the West. And and here we were confronted with a, what we think is a typical African um, issue. Um, I don't know about uh, Accra. I don't think I've ever taken a bus here in Accra, but I did across Africa a lot. And and getting a ticket and getting a seat and the amount of hours you need to spend on, on a bus station waiting before a bus fills up. Uh, was something that we quickly related to as a typical African issue that, with the help of technology, could be improved a lot. Especially at SEED, the only bet we can make is on the entrepreneur. And we've tried also to, to, to give uh, chances and time with entrepreneurs where we said, okay, the idea looks good, what has been done so far makes sense, but he or she absolutely needs a kind of CEO, CMO, kind of that person that can execute and drive this competition. And we failed many times because the idea usually dies with that, with that entrepreneur. Uh, because there's this ego, uh, there's this uh, kind of uh, my baby approach to the, to the product or service, which is a pity because there is, a lot of these entrepreneurs just need that right co-founder, right mentor, right investor to kind of drive them in the right direction, but they stay stuck at a certain level. What we do is to help these students get timely access to all of these notices. Not only are we giving them access to, the not to notices, but also we help them to connect among their friends on campus, know of trending discussion topics, as well as even know of events happening on their campuses. Great to have um, some of my partners know this knowledge now, um, not only on their web page, but also transacting businesses across maybe Togo or maybe Benin, just to have an event there and be invited or something like that. I tend to prefer uh, what we call two in a box. Um, so I always tend to prefer uh, having a co-founder rather than founding alone for exactly the same reasons that Chica spoke about. It's extremely lonely, it's extremely emotionally tasking, and, and exactly the examples that Chica gave. Right after the meeting, I'm able to turn to my partner and say, okay, this is no says bull oh, crap, I'm not going to work with that guy. So yeah, I'm not going to work with that guy. We dust it off and we move on. We um, have funds under management of $32 million. Our first fund, which was more like an experimental fund out of which we invested in PC Internet, was about $8.5 million. It's all about you, the entrepreneur, knowing the market very well, and then they partner you with their experience and expertise to achieve that goal. Because there's a, there's, there's a reason why they're investing, they want to cash out in probably the next three years and they want to multiply that investment by a number. You know, so for them that's the math they do. <laughs> and so when, when they are coming they want you to be certain and tell them exactly how much you, you want so that they can cash up. Um, so effectively Joffer 2015 is um, over. Please put your hands together. My name is Alfred Rowe, co-founder of Empower Payments and co-founder of Ego Tickets. The Angel Fair Accra 2015 has been a great event. I mean, I met a lot of investors, met a lot of partners, uh, we had discussions. There was a lot of roundtable discussions where I picked a lot of insights to grow my business the right way. I think that was my take for the Angel Fair Africa 2015. Thank you. So I'm Jifa from Jifa.com. I think organizations like this are very important for our ecosystem. It's always important for investors to meet startups with a lot of potential. I really enjoyed it. I met some really amazing people and I can't wait to see what's up for next year. Bye. My name is Eric Osiakwan. I'm from Ghana and I'm managing partner of Shanzo Capital and also co-founder of Angel Fair Africa. Angel Fair Africa basically is an event that brings entrepreneurs and investors together to do deals. 
We focus on deals because we believe that Africa is at an interesting uh, intersection of entrepreneurship, innovation, and the same way the entrepreneurs and innovators creating great businesses, there are also investors with money looking for those opportunities. So the essence of this event is really to do deals. It's not a conference, it's not a talk shop, it's a deal-making event. Last year when we did this event in Ghana, we had $20.3 million worth of deals at the event. And this year in Nairobi, we're going to see more upside deals. Some of the entrepreneurs um, that are speaking on our exit panel are entrepreneurs who have built companies, sold and made money. One of them is Jerry Riongi, who started Wananchi and, sold it to, and, and exited it to East African Capital Partners. We also have Hilda Murai, who sold her company, Weather Teller, to AFB for $1.7 million. And so essentially what we're looking here in this event is a deal-making event. Myself, I've invested in 12 companies. In Kenya, I've invested so far in three companies. One that didn't work, one I exited, one is doing well. And the other investors that we have here are investors who are looking for opportunities to invest not only in Kenya, but Africa-wide. The essence of this event is to create an African-wide market. First of all, we want to get entrepreneurs to think Africa-wide, but also want to get investors to see the opportunity in investing in businesses across multiple markets that create trade and create opportunities for jobs, but most essentially grows the economy. Because we all know that uh, economic growth is purely predicated on intra-African trade. And so Angel Fair Africa is all about doing deals, getting entrepreneurs and investors together, and making sure that they're either writing checks, they're doing partnership, they're doing trade deals, or they're doing mentoring and other forms of deals. So welcome to Angel Fair Africa. Today's our first day, and tomorrow we're going to have a second day that looks at scale-ups, companies who are looking to raise their second to third money. But they've already the first money. We're going to have investors who also look at those portfolio of companies that are looking to scale and raise more money for their businesses. I think this will be one of a kind because um, Kenya leads the kings in the digital economy and um, it's a room full of intelligent people but in case anybody has forgotten kings is uh, Kenya, Ivory Coast, Nigeria, Ghana and South Africa. Africa has a lot. Africa is the land of opportunity, the land of plenty. The fact that Africa is not fully developed gives it the opportunity to have many, many opportunities. So I try at any moment to tell Africans, you have no other motherland that you keep somewhere else. You have no two passports. Can you protect the image of your country? The Africa is taking over the world. I think adjust your terms, but like recognize what you actually need and then raise for that. Um, I know that it's not always the case. We under-raise, but we still ask for like three times what we actually needed, knowing that we're gonna be cut somewhere. So make sure you ask for enough. Uh, so I was just gonna add to you know, the comment regarding um, getting the right angel who has the competence in the market and the industry. Um, we could also share an investor, Joe Michelle. Um, and he was an angel investor in Amati, my, my company the moment. And he gave us cash and um, we could check it on us once every three or four months. And it wasn't the kind of pressure that we got from our, uh, our other foreign investors who were more aggressive with the ROI compared to someone like Joe who said, look, I understand the market, I get what you're trying to do. And I Exactly. I get what you're trying to do. And um, just make sure you don't lose my money. That pressure alone makes sure that you don't lose the cash. And he also, before you invest as an angel investor, surely you should have done some basic research with the account of individual you're investing in. Do they have a, a piece of moral compass um, and hopefully points in the right direction? Well, encouraging words, I mean, I don't know, I, you have to work hard, but if, if you do that and you make a, some of the right decisions, you'll probably have to fail a couple times before you get there. Um, then, then you'll certainly see the returns. And that's what I'm hoping for myself with Singularity and certainly for all of the companies that we're investing in as well. I wouldn't be here if, if you guys weren't uh, sort of trying to do big things, disrupt, uh, change the world. So really, you know, the, the, you guys have the leverage, not the investors. Um, and I know you probably don't feel like that when you're, when you're trying to raise capital, um, but you guys are the ones that are going to be able to change the world and we'd love to be partners with you. Now, within five years, we can be building 180 of these systems every year and that's just an ETH. We can go so much further.
So we need $70,000 in convertible debt to finish our mobile apps, to find and train our early franchisees, and to market to other areas throughout Ethiopia. Look, nobody in the world wants to walk for water. Flowius means that they don't have to at a price they can afford. With Flowius, we're building water better. We do go to the fitness for this product. We hold yes, the, the, the village and the Denmark. And these products have won four main awards. Last year they won the Tony and Mu and, and Tony and Mu Entrepreneurship Award. 2013 they won the African Union Innovation Award. 2012 they won the, African, the Kenyan Public Service Innovation Award. And again 2012 they won the National Council for Science and Technology Award. We are seeking for three million US dollars for two things. One, 1.5 million US dollars for upscaling the sales of the two products. And then another 1.5 million US dollars to complete the human transport price for that microbicycle product unicorn so that it can commercialize. Uh, we have been around for about uh, a year and a half, well, you know, legally two years, but operationally about a year and a half. And uh, so far this year we've done about $200,000 uh, in revenue. Our average clientele is people who are looking for uh, uh, credit facilities ranging between 25,000 shillings to $250 to $400. That's the majority of our clientele. These are people who have just started working or maybe have had an incident that they need an electronic. Some of them are parents buying electronics for their students, uh, for their kids. Uh, and that's our typical clientele. We are currently looking to raise about $500,000 uh, to expand. The money will go essentially to increasing our capacity to do loans, uh, which is the loans for the electronics, uh, and as well as to, to properly implement and introduce our technology. Today is going to do the same. Today we have a slightly different program. Yesterday we didn't have a closing keynote, but today we'll have a material of uh, 500 startups. So please stick around for that. That's going to be really exciting. But it was really from gifts from family and friends, and then as the business grew, perhaps um, accessing credit lines to the bank. So the truth of the matter is that no, I never have needed to raise um, from. As you can imagine, I, being the time of the I have, I know a lot of people, a lot of investors, and so I had all these doors open to me, and a lot of notes, right? Um, didn't matter if you were in the U.S., in San Francisco, New York, Boston, Austin, uh, London, I went all over the place, and, uh, and, and most everybody said no. So I had, you know, let's say 100 meetings, I had 10 yeses at the end of the day, and it was uh, a real eye-opener for me and I think the lesson for every other entrepreneur is that it doesn't matter who you know, how many people you know, raising money is hard and a lot of work and you have to be expected, um, you have to be expecting that um, most people will say no. If you are as an entrepreneur and you are pitching to a family-owned business entity, uh, one thing I have to say is that, you know, be, be sure of exactly what you want. Um, there's a reason, there should be a reason why you're approaching a particular family-owned group or industry. Uh, what are the potential synergies that you could potentially uh, you know, sell and be part of, be part, be form part of your, of, of your marketing pitch? Because at the end of the day, as an angel investor, we also look, or rather I also look at being a bit more involved in the business and helping that business go. That's why we find most of the businesses that we'll invest in and businesses that I can also be able to add value either through networks or because of knowledge of that particular industry that they're in, right? So on lines that specifically, I mean, I, I don't think I'm those entrepreneurs know what they're talking about quite much. Like, it's really sad because you're like negotiating valuations like you're negotiating for the price of a bottle of water. You know, you're like, um, 5%, no, I want 40, okay, I'll give you 35. And you're like, are you really calculating in your head? You know, we're there with pens and notepads, so you know, we're doing like a quick calculation and, you know, saying, okay, if we do 40% for 1 million, it means that the company is worth this much and at this level. So we're able to make that quick decision, but the guy is just standing there, literally, like he's negotiating both, right? So it's really, um, 
there's a few people who stick to their guns and who will go and consult you, they'll come back and you can tell, okay, those are probably people who are looking for the second stage investment, so they are a bit more clear on what they're talking about. Um, but I think, and it's not just for the entrepreneurs who come into the den, I think it's just generally for very many young entrepreneurs who don't understand valuation a lot. A lot of people will base their valuation on the industry. You know, you'll come and say, I want to start a magazine in the print industry in Africa is worth this much and da da da, so the value of my business is this. And you're like, um, have you sold one copy? And you're like, no, but you know, this is what it's going to be like. So a lot of people value their businesses based on the whole ecosystem and business is really work like that. The voluntary of outcomes and the substantial amount of failure that happens in startups. As a result of that, they'll do one or two investments. Uh, those investments generally will fail, and then will be, what the fuck, this doesn't work, tech is like, you know, not gonna work in my country, right, or in my region, or our entrepreneurs suck relative to other entrepreneurs. Um, or they wanna take 50 to 80% ownership of the company. Um, I'm guessing people are laughing here because I'm probably describing things that are familiar in the rest. <laughs> I've never been to Nigeria before, but I've seen this in about 40 countries around the world. Um, and my consistent feedback to those investors is, get the fuck out of your shit straight and understand like what is going on. Because your consistent complaint is about the entrepreneurs in your ecosystem not being good enough, and you're wrong. When you say that, you identify yourself as a naive investor, and I think a lot less of you, because I've seen successful angel investors all over the world, and they're generally not the ones that are trying to take 50 to 80% ownership. They're not the ones that are complaining about the local ecosystem. Uh, the ones that are successful are the ones who are actually pretty nice to entrepreneurs, because they know otherwise that deal flow is gonna leave, and they're pretty friendly with making connections around the world. Um, that's a difficult lesson for most angel investors to learn because they're arrogant and rich and they come from a lot of areas where they've already crushed it, but they don't know their ass from a hole in the ground in terms of internet, usually. Um, there's not very many people outside Silicon Valley where they come with both industry expertise and capital. And they'll think that their industry expertise in real estate or in finance or in other areas is leverageable into the internet. Very rarely that is true in certain areas. Most of the times it's not true. Uh, I would like to close by thanking you all for coming for our speakers, uh, for the entrepreneurs. This is the beginning of the journey. Now this day, like we said, it's a marathon, it's a sprint. Um, so uh, we're all gonna retire now. Um, and it's Friday, so you know, get out there, you know, check out the CES night, right? Those who are flying, have a safe flight. Those who are hanging out tomorrow, be safe in the city. Everything is safe, just, you know, just a little bit more vigilant. Pour cette deuxième journée, on a eu euh, encore plus de pitch, euh, des panels euh, très intéressants, euh, notamment le premier panel, l'investor panel, bon, qui, a eu, qui a eu pour moi une des discussions les plus franches euh, sur la question de l'investissement dans, dans les startups en Afrique francophone. Les, les investisseurs nous ont dit deux choses. Euh, ils ont avoué de ne pas avoir nécessairement en eux-mêmes les, les compétences nécessaires pour analyser les, les startups technologiques, et ça se comprend en, quand on regarde leurs profils, ils sont en général totalement financiers. Et puis, ils ont aussi expliquer que souvent, la structure de leur fonds faisait qu'ils étaient obligés d'aller sur, euh, sur des deals qui étaient plus grands que euh, ce qu'une ce qu start-up en général demande dans les premiers tours. Donc, euh, donc un, un des vrais problèmes, c'est un problème de compétence au niveau des investisseurs pour pouvoir aborder les questions de start-up technologique. Et puis ensuite, il y a la question de comment est-ce qu'on fait en sorte que ces fonds-là qui sont là pour faire des, du financement d'entreprises déjà en croissance, puissent euh, trouver le moyen de financer des entreprises en amorçage. Euh, là où il y a le, le vrai problème, parce que là pour le coup, il n'y a personne qui est prêt à investir quasiment. Alors les réponses qu'on pourrait apporter, ça date d'il y a quelques heures, donc euh, je pense qu'on peut commencer à réfléchir sur comment préparer des, euh, des programmes de formation dédiés aux investisseurs professionnels pour euh, aborder des startups technologiques. 
euh, quand, quand ils ne viennent pas eux-mêmes de la technologie. Ça, c'est quelque chose qui peut se faire avec des structures de, de executive education comme, euh, comme notre partenaire MDE qui, euh, qui je pense, sera, sera en mesure de monter un programme comme ça. On peut aussi trouver le moyen d'avoir pour eux des consultants qui viennent de la, du monde de la technologie, qui sont capables de leur dire « Écoutez, moi j'ai travaillé dans telle start-up, j'ai travaillé dans telle entreprise technologique. » Oui, je peux vous dire qu'effectivement, euh, ce projet-là a, a de l'avenir. Donc euh, je pense qu'on peut trouver le moyen de les entourer et de mieux les accompagner. Euh, la, la, le vrai problème aujourd'hui, c'est ça, c'est ce disconnect qu'il peut y avoir entre nous, entrepreneurs, et les start-up euh, d'un côté, écosystème technologique, et puis le monde de la finance qui est vraiment purement financier et qui a du mal à, à regarder euh, avec, euh, j'allais dire, assurance, ce qui se passe dans l'écosystème startup. Et puis ensuite, vient le problème de, de, de la taille, de, de la structure des fonds eux-mêmes, qui, euh, qui, bon, qui va être plus difficile à résoudre, mais, euh, mais je suis sûr qu'en travaillant euh, ensemble, on va trouver des solutions aussi pour ça, pour, euh, pour, trouver, pour créer plus de fonds qui sont dédiés à l'amorçage, euh, là où il y a un vrai problème, et afin que ceux-ci puissent en, être en mesure de... De, de générer des entreprises prêtes pour la croissance et à se faire financer et pour lesquelles il y a déjà des investisseurs. Voilà, cette année, AFA, ça a été euh, du concret, euh, de la confrontation d'idées et puis des discussions franches. Alors les trois se rejoignent, mais je pense que c'était vraiment ce qui manquait euh, en général dans les événements ici et euh, je pense que ça va apporter des résultats. Pour ceux qui ne connaissent pas Angel Fair, euh, c'est une initiative donc, qui a plus de 6 ans aujourd'hui et qui a eu pas mal de, de success stories. À, ch à chaque Angel Fair, il y a deux ou trois deals qui se font. Donc, euh, par exemple, on a Toutou Aguerre qui a investi l'an dernier euh, plus de 100 000 dollars dans, euh, dans une compagnie. Singularity Investment qui a mis 200 000 dollars aussi dans, euh, dans une autre compagnie. Donc, on espère. Euh, que l'édition Côte d'Ivoire honorera euh, ses promesses quand même parce que la Côte d'Ivoire c'est 35% de l'économie euh, de la zone UMOA avec euh, des, des grands groupes et des investisseurs euh, bah, comme Orange entre autres euh, et comme Aban euh, qui ont déjà fait pas mal de choses intéressantes sur la sous-région et bien sûr la Fondation Numérique qui à mon avis a, a déniché l'une des entreprises les plus prometteuses sur les 10 prochaines années en Afrique. Donc euh, attendez de voir « Watch this space » comme on dit. Alors, en Côte d'Ivoire, il y a encore euh, 4-5 ans, nous n'avions pas l'environnement nécessaire euh, pour le développement d'entreprises numériques euh, qui innovent, qui créent. Il a fallu créer cet environnement. Aujourd'hui, je dois dire que nous avons un environnement euh, qui qui prête attention, nous avons un environnement qui commence à devenir mature et qui est à même d'accompagner des initiatives. Il y a longtemps, euh, le taux de pénétration en utilisation d'Internet n'était pas aussi élevé en Afrique. Donc, à cette époque-là, le marketing digital euh, n'était pas du tout, du tout utile et n'avait pas de sens. Aujourd'hui, vu que la plupart de, des gens euh, détiennent un smartphone et sont connectés sur Internet, et du coup peuvent être touchés par une communication qui est lancée depuis Internet, du coup, ça devient le moyen le plus efficace et le plus rentable en matière de communication. La Fondation Jeunesse Numérique a été créée à l'initiative du ministère en charge de l'économie numérique officiellement donc en 2016. La Fondation Jeunesse Numérique a vraiment pour objectif d'abord de sensibiliser à l'usage des TIC, de détecter des porteurs de projets intéressants, donc des talents potentiels, et puis de les accompagner en termes d'incubation, donc formation, coaching, mais également en termes d'accélération, c'est-à-dire tout ce qui est mis en relation stratégique aide à la recherche de financement, comme c'est le cas dans le cadre de Angel Fair Africa aujourd'hui, et puis également euh, le mentoring que parfois on sous-estime, qui est aussi important que le, le financement. Well, first of all, I always like to know what 
But what is the motivation of the entrepreneur? Because if, if they want to be CEO, but they don't have any purpose beyond that, it's, to me it's not a very good sign. Because they'll focus on being CEO and they'll, they might not work very well with people. Uh, you know, if, if it's a healthcare investment, I do lots of healthcare. I want to know that they understand the healthcare market. Not enough to say, I graduated from college, the healthcare system is broken, I'm going to fix it. Yeah. If there are logistics, they should know how to drive a truck, they should understand supply chain. They, but in the end, the entrepreneur should understand what the problem is they want to solve. And they should be more focused on that than I have the answer. Because most companies, after three or four years, they discover their answer wasn't really correct, but they've come up with a better answer. So if you focus on the goal, you can be flexible. If you focus on, I have the best idea, if the idea is not perfect, c'est mon projet, donc je pense qu'il n'y a pas de raison que je n'arrive pas à expliquer, à partager peut-être le déclic, ce qui m'a emmené à, à penser développer le projet, et puis emmener les gens à, à, comprendre, à comprendre et à, à pourquoi pas investir dans ce projet qui, pour moi, est vraiment, euh, qui a un impact social énorme. Alors les investisseurs, c'est sûr, ils ne sont pas venus distribuer de l'argent, ils ne sont pas là pour nos beaux yeux. Euh, Est-ce que ce qu'on propose est fiable, est crédible Est-ce que ça produit de l'argent Est-ce que ça fait du bien à la société Je crois que si euh, ce que fait mon entreprise répond à ces questions, je vais les intéresser. Je tremblais, j'avais les pieds qui ne tenaient pas du tout. Alors j'avais prévu de leur remettre les bijoux qui les touchent. Je ne pouvais même pas avancer d'un pas, je dû les déposer. <rire> Qu'ils puissent eux-mêmes venir les chercher. Donc j'étais stressable, ça je t'avoue. Et là encore, après le pitch, je pense que j'ai tremblé encore. Je suis allée dehors pour prendre un peu d'air. Mais je pense que je vais m'entraîner à cela. Finalement, ça c'est bien. C'est bien de pouvoir expliquer à des personnes extérieures, pas forcément des personnes du corps médical à qui j'ai l'habitude d'expliquer habituellement, ou pas encore à des patients à qui j'explique, mais des personnes extérieures qui ont, qui ont une autre vision, qui ont un autre objectif en m'écoutant. Donc ça c'est bien. Le train dans lequel nous avons mis les deux pieds et qui a pour objectif de pouvoir mobiliser 350 millions de francs CFA dans les deux années à venir vient juste s'arrêter devant vous. Et ce train aimerait bien que vous nous rejoigniez pour qu'ensemble nous puissions réaliser les 900 millions de chiffres d'affaires prévisionnels que nous envisageons pour les trois années qui vont suivre. Réellement, moi, euh, les investisseurs sur la période actuelle, non, j'en ai pas vraiment besoin maintenant. Dans un, deux ans, oui, j'en aurai besoin. Mais c'est bon que le contact se fasse dès maintenant, qu'on apprenne à se connaître. Euh, c'est bon qu'on se découvre, les investisseurs et, et moi, pour que dans un an, dans deux ans, on puisse passer aux phases qui m'intéressent le plus. The best thing is to understand the, the people that you're, you're dealing with. Um, and it, it's not just to, get the, just to get an investor, it's about getting the right investor. And so that conversation is starting and we are trying to figure out, I'm sure she's trying to figure out whether, whether we are the right people to invest in. And I'm trying to figure out whether she's a, she might be the right person to take money from, if she offers. Um, some of them were very good, some were very early, and I was, so it's not also this is good or this is bad, it's this is my interest, this is not my interest. My interests include logistics and transportation and, and sort of efficiency and, and mapping, again, kind of digitizing the real world. I'm also interested in health and medicine, you know, and I'm interested in neat new business models so it's 
it's hard to describe precisely what I'm interested in, but definitely I like emerging markets where it's so easy to find ways to make people's lives better. Comme avec la gestuelle, vous pouvez, vous pouvez communiquer effectivement avec le public. Je maîtrise ma chose, mais je n'ai peur. Il allait devant, il revenait. Hein? Il mettait un pied devant, un pied derrière, et on va faire sa pensée. Ou bien tu stands still, ou bien tu bouges, mais en réagissant le public. Et on a dit le matin, seulement 3 par 1, 2 et 3. Très souvent, les gens pensent que quand ils passent un message, quand ils sont en situation de communication, le plus important, c'est ce qu'ils disent. Et j'ai essayé de leur dire aujourd'hui que ce n'est pas ça le plus important. Le plus important, c'est comment ils suivent les gestionnaires pour, pour, pour connecter avec le public. La grosse difficulté du, pour, du PIC pour moi, c'est surtout euh, la variation de, de, de la voix, la transmission d'une émotion. L'élément le plus important que j'ai appris, c'est que sur place, il y a la confiance, la confiance et la confiance. J'ai vu dans beaucoup de pitch, après le mien, énormément d'éléments que je gagnerais à intégrer dans mon pitch. Je vais, je, vais, je, vais, je vais me mettre à fond et puis je vais donner le meilleur de moi-même. Et, et je pense qu'ils seront convaincus forcément à vouloir investir dans mon affaire. Em termos de AMBA, nós queremos usar o modelo deste evento para replicarmos e começarmos a juntar mais empreendedores locais com mais investidores locais. Eu acredito que desta interação, os verdadeiros negócios vão sair. Angel Fair has been a success this year. We've seen a lot of successful businesses and uh, new promising startups. Um, this is very good for the continent and I hope it grows more and more. Há aqui uma nova geração de empreendedores que vão fazer diferença a nível de Moçambique, a nível da África e nós queremos que este evento continue. Estamos orgulhosos por fazer parte disto e, e acho que agora o way forward é, é continuarmos essas sinergias a nível de, dos empreendedores da África e de todo o ecossistema. As oportunidades para um novo tipo de financiamento, principalmente para startups e para ideias inovadoras, este é um palco para a juventude aproveitar apresentando os seus, os seus projetos, de modo a que os investidores, prováveis investidores, possam apreciar e investir. Quando eu comecei o negócio, eu investi meus próprios 10.000 anos para a empresa. E por isso, para o ano 2, para indicar a crescimento da indústria da África, para o ano 2, nós fizemos um revenue de 200 mil dólares. Por isso, nós queremos fazer isso em todo o mundo. 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 Nós queremos fazer isso em todo o about the need for sustainability, so economic sustainability, social sustainability, and environmental sustainability. This event, uh, it's a great opportunity to network. Uh, and the network can allow us to find new markets that you are not even uh, looking at. So, and we could do that in this event. So it's always worth it, even if you don't come with a new partner or an investor. So it's always, always good to come to these sort of events. You learn a lot. You learn where you need to improve on your business. It's been a great event where we've been able to share experiences. We've had some amazing entrepreneurs page, and we've already seen conversations around deals already happening. 
So it's been an amazing two days in Mozambique and we look forward to seeing the outcomes of these uh, events um, in terms of deal making going forward. What is required is for you to know how to use the tool. That is this world that we live in today. You have to invest uh, seriously in technology. What benefit have we extracted from that? You don't gain by being a customer all the time. And therefore, if you want to work in the industry, you have to have an aspect or understanding of technology. So when we put out the solution out there, we've actually solved their challenges. Just be strategic on your business problems and then find the right investors to answer to your specific problems.